It's time for Raiders Talk of the Nation. I'm your host, Christine Leahy, and we've spent some time over the past few weeks with some of the biggest names on the Raiders roster and the president of Raider Nation. But tonight, I am getting the ultimate tour of Las Vegas from a man who knows the rich history of where this city has grown from and is still a big part of its future. Hi! It is, it is so nice to meet you. I am so thrilled to meet you. I'm a big fan of yours. I am a big fan of yours. I wanted to meet you here at the Westgate because this is the starting point for so many performers. The Rat Pack, Elvis, you. What kind of like feelings do you have when you come back to this place or you see it? This place I never pass without getting multi-feelings okay. of all of the people that worked here and were friends of mine. I met my wife Aww. here. I have so many memories, it would be tough to pick just one. Okay, well, I was gonna ask you if you have a favorite performance that you saw here. I think I would have to say it's the one where I met my wife. You she were was, performing? I was on stage okay. and I come walking out and there sat one of the most beautiful ladies. Oh. Uh, that I had ever seen, and so I sent someone out to invite her backstage. Wow. And um, that didn't go well. <laughs> she turned you down? She said, no, thank you. She was approached in a bad way. Oh, uh, by the person you sent the out. The gentleman okay. said, Mr. Newton wants you backstage. Oh. And oh. of course, that was not the right thing. Not very gentlemanly. No, not at all. I said, did you at least get her name? Okay. Yes. What is it? And he told me. So I went to the phone. So I paged her. And I apologized for the way that she was approached because I knew it had to have been not the way I would have done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, well, maybe if you're going to be in town, we could have coffee or something another day. And she said, uh, thank you, but we're busy the whole time we're here. I said, well, if it should work out, just let me know. And I, again, apologize for the way you were approached. And uh, the next night, a friend of mine who was a judge came into my dressing room, and with him was my now wife Aww. and her mother <laughs> and her sister. And that's when we first met. That is a great story. So this is a meaningful place. For this you. is a very meaningful place. I'm so glad that we started here. Um, this place also used to be the largest hotel in the world. Yes. We have come a long way since then. Yes, and now we have. the strip is what it is. And I thought it would be the best if I could get a tour of the strip from you. And I arranged for some transportation. You arranged. I, I arranged for transportation for us. Here we go. Coming up, Wayne Newton talks about the history of Las Vegas. Can we look back and see how important those people were to what this has become? The story behind the song that put Wayne on the map. Billy Crystal's uncle had written the English lyric to it. And what he really thinks about the Raiders coming to Vegas. The Raiders, the people of this town, have something in common, and it's called win. Raiders Talk of the Nation is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, official health partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Discover your inner champ at raiders.com slash champ. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights, Book now, only at Allegiant.com. And by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. With more than 60 years of performances in Las Vegas under his belt, nobody does it better than Mr. Las Vegas himself. But for the man who's done it all, he says there's still so much more for him left to accomplish in the town that he calls home. Well, this is, I think, the coolest way I could possibly tour Las Vegas. Thank you. Well, my pleasure. Wait, okay, so you actually were just telling me who used to live right there. 
Right at the top of that building where the two squares are? Yeah. That was Elvis' suite. I spent a lot of time up there and uh, okay. after shows and uh, What are those clubs. parties like? <laughs> T tell me all the details of what went on in that room. Well, really, it was just a, the musicians kind of wandering around and a few of their friends who, mostly ladies, play piano and sing and sometimes we would have a drink or two uh, and that's pretty much it was just a friendly yeah. friendly get together it wasn't anything formal it is so cool that you were friends with elvis how did you guys become friends the first time i met elvis was around 1965. Okay. i was doing a uh, show in Los Angeles. I had no idea that the next stage over, Elvis was shooting a movie. Oh. And so I'm seated there going through my script notes. There was a tap on the shoulder. I turned around and there stood Elvis Presley. Wow. I started mumbling about what a big fan I was, how much I loved his music. And he said to me, Wayne, do you know a girl by the name of Sandy Farah? And I said, well, well yes. Uh, we're dating. Oh. And he said, so are we. Oh, wow. So that was my first wow. meeting with Elvis. So did you <laughs> confront Sandy together? No, we didn't. As a matter of fact, we both started to laugh. <laughs> and, and Sandy's a dear friend of this day. She ended up marrying Wink Martindale. OK. And, uh, she knew how to date. Yes. All right. So she, she married the right one. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you were called Mr. Las Vegas? It was a reporter, I think from Texas, in fact, hmm. tagged that article, Mr. Las Vegas. People picked up on it like it was something that had been put out and made up by a whole bunch of people. Okay. Today, if I'm appearing somewhere out of town, they don't even put my name on the it's marquee. Just Mr. It's Las just Vegas. Mr. Las Vegas. So. Do you love that or you hate it? I love it. You do. But I also realize there's a great deal of responsibility sure. that goes with that. Yeah. Because what I do and how I handle myself is a reflection on the city. Sure. Too. Yeah. I can't believe you started performing here when you were 14. Yes. I mean, and Vegas is really a 21-plus kind of town. You know what I mean? In those years, it really was. It really was. You really could not even go in the casino, much less through it. So you not only were getting in the casino, you were performing. They had to get me a special permit. Wow. That, and I have that permit to this day. Oh. And I said, Wayne Newton can work at the Fremont Hotel. He's just not allowed to be in the place he's working. So Don Cushane, everyone knows Don Cushane. And I actually just heard for the first time today that it might not have ever been because it was maybe gonna go to someone else and not you, is that true? Well, what happened is the guy who gave me Don Cushane was an incredible friend and talent by the name of Bobby Darren. I had no idea where the song came from its history, who wrote it, any of that stuff, because I wasn't into that at that, at that moment. Uh, I found out about a year later that it had been written by Bert Kentford from Germany. Yeah. And Billy Crystal's uncle had written the English lyric to it. Oh. But it was meant for Bobby Darren to record and follow Mac the Knife with it. So all of these places that we're seeing around us now, I would say pretty much all of them have a headliner, right? You were the first real headliner. Do you know about approximately how many shows you've done total? OK, I think Vegas, there would now be somewhere in the neighborhood of 40,000 shows. 40,000 shows. Did I read somewhere that you did six shows a day at one point? Yes. How do you do that? It falls in that category of nobody told you it was difficult. <laughs> you just did it. Yeah, that was the job. So we're coming up on Caesars Palace. You've called this the flagship 
of the Strip, right? Yes. Why do you consider it the flagship? Caesar's Palace, Frank played there. Um, I can't think of most performers who haven't yeah. played Caesar's at some point. It's true. And uh, so it was always a place that you looked up to and then you aspired to perform at. Do you ever just drive down the strip, like in your car, just to have fun? No, but I did something that I've never done before. What's that? During the last year and a half of, of this hiccup, I, my wife and I took bicycles. Bicycles? And we started up where the original airport was, which is now the Hughes Terminal. And, uh, uh, and we rode bikes all, all the way down to where the Sahara wow. uh, was reached. And you were probably only able to do that because the strip was empty, right? It was empty, but a few of the bike riders uh, recognized us uh -huh. and, uh, and joined the group. So we started out with just you know, three or four people. Yeah. And they ended up with about 30 by the time. Wow, the Wayne Newton bike crew. There you go. <laughs> You're like the mayor. This is really cool. Do you have, out of the 40,000 something shows that you did, do you have a favorite one, aside from the one you met your wife? I had the great opportunity of uh, being on stage with Elvis. Uh, being on stage with Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis. Uh, I opened with the uh, rock band, The Killers, who oh, yeah. are from here. Yeah. Uh, T-Mobile, uh, we opened that. So cool. And so I've had so many. To work for Howard Hughes alone, mm -hmm. Kirk Kikorian, who built the the hotel we were just at, which was the biggest hotel in the right. world. Only in retrospect, I think, can we look back and see how important those people were and are to what this has become. Up next, we talk the future of sports in Las Vegas. I think that that building means that Las Vegas has arrived as one of the top attractions in the world. Plus, we check in with Mark Chinook from our studios as he sits down with Raiders coach Rod Marinelli and his daughter Gina to talk food and football. This segment of Raiders Talk of the Nation has been brought to you by Modelo, a taste that's pure gold, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. What's up, Raider Nation? I've got a superstar chef and a veteran coach. And the thing that they have in common is that they are a father-daughter duo. It is my pleasure to sit down right now with Rod and Gina Marinelli. All right, right out of the gate, Coach, how yep. exciting is it for you to be in Las Vegas and also knowing that your daughter has been here for some time cooking up a storm? It's just something <laughs> you, uh, you can't really express. It's just awesome being around her, seeing her how successful she's become. She loves football passionate about it and at the game so it's really a special time for us. <laughs> what was that like for you when you got the word that dad was coming home to Vegas? I mean I was shocked and overwhelmed but so excited. You know we were getting football for the first time here in Vegas which I'd been already calling my home but to have him and my mom come out here it was just like oh my gosh, I can get in my car and drive 20 minutes to a game. And just to support him and be around it again and feel it in your hometown, so excited. So you've cooked for some incredible people, Scott Conant, Michael Mina. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who don't know, La Strega in Summerlin, hands down the hottest restaurant right now in town. How did it come about? How did La Strega you know, start? Yeah, I got a great opportunity to go into business with the great investors. And it's always something I wanted to do, kind of my own expression of Italian food. 
you know, kind of celebrate more coastal, a little bit more feminine side. So we got partnered together and then just took off from there. You know, just took a shot in the dark kind of in Summerlin, but it's really resonated with everyone out there. Coach, yeah. Vegas, what's it like for you as a coach oh, with this team? I mean, the fans are incredible. Yeah. The energy in that stadium is off the charts. As good as any place I've been, I've been around. And uh, that it, you just feel it. And uh, one is the Raiders, and then to tie it with this city, Vegas, it's off the charts. How special is it for you, for you and your wife now to call Vegas home and know that your daughter has a restaurant around the corner? It's awesome. And she's here in the city. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because it's been how long now since you've lived in the same city? About 16, 17 years, yeah. Yeah. something like that. So we get to see her about once or twice a year before. So now I'm down at the restaurant every week and, I, and trying to get a, a reservation myself. <laughs> Best dish that she cooks? It's called the Marinelli salad. Hey-o. Is that not on the menu? Like, it what? is on the menu. Why don't I know about this menu? It's a, it's a salad. <laughs> That's what he picked was a salad. But he's a simple man, so I know what he likes, and I know the flavors he's looking for. So on a, let's just say on a Tuesday or Wednesday, who's more critical of who? Are you critical of his coaching, or are you critical of the, of the cooking? Oh, I mean, I, I will send him, I sent him one text once asking him a question, and he told me, you're not a GM. <laughs> <laughs> I give her so many notes. Yeah, he does. And her older sister is always getting on us, telling oh, yeah. me to butt out. <laughs> and I was trying to draw maps and how to be more efficient, and nobody wants my advice. There are a lot of incredible chefs based in Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, and you've appeared on some incredible television programs at the national level. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine the pressure of cooking in Las Vegas is just as as crazy as those TV programs. The best advice I ever got, use your nerves to work for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do every day. And, you know, trust your team. And these are, you know, ideas and thoughts that I've learned from him. You know, and how to be a leader and how to coach and how to guide and trust everyone around you. And that's the only way you can take the pressure off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, uh inspiration or motivation there that you find to create these new dishes almost weekly? I want to hold a higher standard for myself and my team. And I know what it's like to go in every day and cook the same food. It can get very mundane, mm -hmm. it can be very uninspired. And so I always say, they're pushing themselves, I'm gonna push myself the most. You know, and always kind of give them a place that they can feel really proud to work at and that they learn and then they grow. Because a lot of people, you leave a restaurant to try new food, but if I keep introducing new dishes mm -hmm. and new techniques, then they kind of start to grow with you and want to stay. You set the stage just like the coaching staff does in the locker room. You know, you create that environment that makes it uh, a special place to be. Definitely two special places to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Legion Stadium with the Raiders yeah. and La Strega in Summerlin. I can't thank you guys enough for spending time with us. Thank oh, you. Uh, this was great. To everybody watching, if you haven't been to La Strega in Summerlin, Go. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Gina cooks up a storm and the food is absolutely incredible. Give yourself a week because you're going to need some time to find that <laughs> reservation. <laughs> Gina and Rod Marinelli, thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you, you, Mark. Appreciate it. Still ahead, we wrap up the ultimate tour of Las Vegas with one final stop. Winning was what it was about. It's what Vegas is about. This segment of Raiders Talk of the Nation has been brought to you by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation made to chill. Raiders Talk of the Nation has been brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Las Vegas Raiders. Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. And by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now, only at Allegiant.com. Well, we've seen it all on our tour down the strip, but at the end of the just over four mile drive lies the newest chapter for Las Vegas and its patient fans. Something Wayne told me he can't wait for. We're driving up to Allegiant Stadium. You were actually part of the groundbreaking ceremony, right, in 2017? What do you think that building means for Las Vegas moving forward? I think that that building means that Las Vegas has arrived as one of the top attractions in the world. You're used to, obviously, the glamour and the, the showmanship of Las Vegas. How do you feel like the Raiders fit into that? I think about the history of Las Vegas. Vegas, while I've been here, has gone through 
maybe five to six different evolutions about every 10 years. And now it has moved into this space. If you're in Chicago and you go to Wrigley Field, mm -hmm. I don't care who you are, where you're from, or where you love these lie. You leave there being a Cub fan. Yes. And that's what's going to happen here. When you look at the Raiders' history and the, the Davis family and what they've meant to this, this team, winning was what it was about. That's what Davis is about. That is so true. And so if you don't win every game, if you, if you lose once in a while, it's not the end of the world. And I'm sure you're not gonna win every game, but the Raiders, the people of this town, have something in common. It's called win. Your commitment to excellence and your will to win will endure forever. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of Raiders Talk of the Nation. We want to thank the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino for hosting us and, of course, Big Bus Tours for providing our transportation for the day. We have so much more from our chat with Wayne that you can catch as part of our exclusive content online at Raiders.com. You can also subscribe to the Raiders official YouTube page for updates and more. I'm Christine Leahy, and be sure to join us next week for a special episode with content you haven't seen before.